What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash pro revenge. All right, this story's called, Hey, can you fix my daughter's laptop for free multiple times? Uh, I feel this is a moral pro revenge, but if mods and others don't agree, please feel free to remove it. A bit of backstory slash personal beliefs. I'm willing to help my friends, but we all know someone who has or have themselves a friend who is the group Mooch. The kind of person who knows you're getting together and just shows up nothing in hand and expects expects to be given free food and booze the entire time. Yet, sadly, you put up with them till it gets to the breaking point of wanting to beat them senseless with a shovel. This story is about said friend, whom I finally got to the breaking point with. My moocher friend isn't tech savvy, like, at all. He has zero respect for tech and constantly uses me as his go-to man when stuff goes sideways. Almost always his doing. This is from the olden days of Windows 8 being a fresh hot mess that was the next big thing everyone hated because it took the standard Windows interface, beat it over the head with a bat, tossed the bloody corpse into a wood chipper, then proceeded to light the remaining slurry on fire with military grade napalm. I hate Windows 8 in case you didn't pick up on that. He had recently bought a laptop for his daughter since she was starting to need it for school and he wanted a mobile PC to use when he felt like it. Pretty sure he just wanted it for himself, but needed to convince his wife to okay the expense. Instead of asking me for input, he decided he was just gonna go to Big Blue Multi-Story and buy the cheapest laptop model that rhymes with hell. <laughs> It took less than a day of him fighting with it to call me and ask if I'd put Windows 7 on it because he hated Windows 8. I asked why not return it and get a Windows 7 model, to which he responded, Big Blue doesn't have any Windows 7, only 8, and my daughter really needs this computer. Sure she does. I agree, and he drops it off within an hour. I should note that this happened just after Windows 8 dropped, and there was no classic shell programs out that simply said, Screw off! Off new piece of crap tablet design, we're using the old one everyone knows and can use. So my options were limited. I did an initial look at what I was getting myself into and lucky me, hell had only put out drivers for Windows 8 for this model. Yay! I do about six hours worth of hunting, downloading and tweaking drivers and praying and cursing the tech gods as I installed Windows 7. I had to cherry pick working drivers for most of the hardware, the rest I got got to work through sheer trial and error. I made a restote disk, a rest, I don't know what that is, backed up and labeled every driver for this system in individual numbered folders in case I needed to redo anything on this piece of crap. My friend is notorious for screwing up his computer's operating system. I give him a ring and let him know it's good to go and he picks it up the next day. Less than two weeks later, he texts me saying something's wrong with it. I won't do blah blah blah, or I can't get it to do it one. Shocking. I know. I just restore from the disc I made and give it back the same day. Let's see how long this lasts. Almost a week later, same thing. Again, a quick restore, I give it back. This time, it took almost three whole weeks till I got a text. Now I'm pissed. What the hell is he doing to this thing to screw up the operating system? I finally took the time to look at the system and see what the fuck was going on. He had a bunch of cracked games downloaded and was trying to run those, a bunch of viruses and malware on it, oh, and a bunch of shady video of the adult variety sites in his browser history. I'm livid. The only reason I kept fixing this damn thing was because it was supposed to be his daughter's. I got a hold of his wife to see exactly who was really using the laptop and for what. Turns out he told her it was having issues and he was constantly trying to fix it at home and even took it to work to mess around with it when he had time. He was a manager at a hut that sells pizzas. He's one of those real hands-on managers who lets everyone know what needs to be done, then steps off in the office. So I get the evil idea of fixing things my way. My first step to fixing things my way was to make an admin account that only I had the info for and limit the other account to a limited user. When I talked to his wife, I got a good idea of what his daughter really likes as far 
cigar shows, games, etc. I then proceeded to pimp this laptop out for a 10 year old girl. My Little Pony wallpapers. Oh, my cousin would like that. He's 19. <laughs> About a hundred on rotate. The entire My Little Pony cartoon show store directly on the computer. Bratz Barbie the works. I even redid the icons to a My Little Pony theme and tweaked the user interface to be pink purple colored. I made sure there was a parental lock on the browsers to prevent anything uh, video of the adult variety related from even showing up on the laptop. I installed Team Viewer and locked in my personal credentials so I could get on anytime I needed. And just for good measure, I installed a handy program called Deep Freeze. For those unfamiliar with it, it snapshots the drive as is and restores the drive to that exact image every time the power cycles. Only downside to this program is you lose anything you save on the computer when the power cycles. Not a problem since I had gotten a bulk pack of thumb drives that were multicolored and came with lanyards. I even went a step above and beyond and got a My Little Pony skin for the laptop lid in case he thought of taking it to work again. I personally delivered the laptop this time when the wife and daughter were home. The girly high-pitched squeals of joy that nearly ruptured my eardrums made it all worth it. She went off on a joy-induced tirade as I show her and her mom everything I did, including all the shows and games I put on just for her. I then gave her a bright pink thumb drive with a purple lanyard and explained that when she wanted to play the games or save anything, the drive needed to be plugged in. I set the safe path for all the games to the thumb drive and added a shortcut to the drive itself on the desktop to make sure she wouldn't lose any schoolwork she was doing. I made sure both her and her mom knew the thumb drive had to be plugged in, otherwise things wouldn't be saved. I didn't mention the parental lock I set up or deep freeze. I wanted it to be a surprise for my friend later. Both her and her mom thanked me. I got a big hug from the daughter who is still flying around on cloud nine. She was begging her mom to watch My Little Pony with her before I even left. I knew it was only a matter of time till I got an angry text or call from my friend as soon as he got the chance to use the laptop. I was waiting with gleeful anticipation. I dropped the laptop off on Monday and I knew he wouldn't get a chance to use it till Friday when he got back from a trip he took. Cut to Friday night and I get a call around 8 p.m which I ignore and let go to voicemail. I get three more calls every five to 10 minutes, which I also ignore. Then I get a bunch of texts, which I ignored until about 11 p.m. when I figured he had ample time to try and screw with the laptop, only to be shut down at every attempt. I call him up with an especially snarky attitude, acting half asleep just to piss him off. Finally, where the hell have you been? I tried calling you and texting you, but you never responded. Yeah, I had a long day, so I took an evening nap. What's up? What's up? This piece of crap laptop is busted. That's what's up. I can't get anything to work right. I downloaded the game and tried installing it, but it says I don't have admin rights. I restarted it and the game files were gone completely. So I re-downloaded it, but still couldn't install it. It's not even letting me browse the web. I thought you fixed this. What the hell? Calm down. I'm sure it's something simple. Let me remote in. Wait, you can do that? Yeah, I got sick of having to have it dropped off, so I installed remote software. Let's see. First thing I do is remotely restart the system. It did it again! What? The game I downloaded is gone from the desktop! Oh yeah, I put software on the laptop that restores it to a default setting. Anything not saved on an external drive gets removed. I gave your wife and daughter a thumb drive. Didn't they tell you it was needed? No! What the hell? Why'd you do a stupid thing like that? Well, I've had to fix this thing three times already, and I got sick of it, so I made sure anything you downloaded or tried to install would be deleted and blocked. You don't have admin rights. I do. Last time, there was over a dozen viruses and malware from your games, and the games you were trying to run would barely run on this laptop, even if you had legit versions. What the hell? Why the hell'd you do that? I was trying to watch videos of the adult variety, now I can't even do 
that. I was trying to pirate games, indie games, because I'm a piece of crap. I pay for AAA games, but I pirate indie games, even though they probably need the money more than the AAA guys. But I don't care. And you're taking that away from me. How could you do this? Ah! Insert like 14 and a half more minutes of a rant that I didn't pay any attention to because I don't care. Well, why won't it let me browse the web? Are you sure? Let's see. I bring up Google and start browsing standard sites. Hit a few cartoon sites I favorited for his daughter. Everything looks fine to me. Could you be referring to the video of the Intel variety sites that were in the browser history on your daughter's laptop? Um, yeah, I thought so. See, me being the understanding guy I am, I turned on parental controls to keep web browsing safe for your 10-year-old daughter. The hell is wrong with you? But no, no buts. It took a lot of work to get this thing working for your daughter's sake, then you use it as your personal play toy, which I had to fix three times. I'm done with your bullcrap. I made it so your daughter can use her laptop when and how she needs. If you want your own laptop and screw it up beyond repair, that's fine by me. No more freebies if you screw something up being an idiot. If you think this is unfair, I'd be more than happy to let your wife know exactly what the issue with the laptop was, including screenshots of your browsing history. I don't mind helping, but you go above and beyond being a mooch a lot of the times. Anything else you need help with? No. Have a great weekend. Having spent over 18 years in customer service and tech support, so I went a bit nuclear on him. But I had had enough of his crap. Reminded me of all the too many times the problem isn't the hardware or software. It's the meat puppet smashing their face against the keyboard and wondering why stuff doesn't work. So I simply removed that part of the equation. Amazingly enough, he didn't have any more issues with the laptop. Wonder why. Only time I was gotten a hold of was by his wife asking me to update some things and install some software the daughter needed for school, which I was more than happy to do. Ah, what a nice friend. Uh, you, OP, not <laughs> mooch your friend. That guy sounds insufferable <laughs> and weird, really weird. This story's called, Neighbor Likes to Park in Front of My House. Okay then, this happened a few years ago. My neighbor started parking on the street behind my car, like literally inches, for no apparent reason. My neighbor has a driveway, empty, and also lived two houses down the street. I don't have a driveway, so on-street parking is a must for me. So after a few weeks, I asked if it was necessary to park so close when there was literally no cars on the street for over a quarter mile. He said, no, nope, but there's no law against it, with a big poo-eating grin on his face. A few weeks pass by and my car gets hit because someone thought there was enough room to clear as his truck blocked the view of my car entirely. I see this problem, but unfortunately can't get a model or license plate number. I find my neighbor's email address because I really didn't feel like talking to him and asked him again if he could just park further down the road, closer to his house. Nope, suck out! It. Okay, I had lived there for quite a long time and never had any issues with him or any other neighbor. I keep to myself, never make noise, don't have any noisy pets or parties, etc. His truck has his business name on it. I Google it, find out it's his own business. Lots of Yelp reviews, better business bureau rating, etc. All these links point to his website. I go to check his website. It doesn't load up. I head over to who is and see, what is that? Voice? Voice? What? I don't know. Who is? Let's just stick with that. And see that the domain isn't registered. I snag it. Before I think of what to do with it, I Google the owner's name and find out he's been convicted of murdering a child 20-ish years ago. Whoa. I find a handful of links that details his story rather explicitly. I copy-paste all these links into an email to him, a throwaway account so he can't just reply to me as I deleted it afterward, said something like, well, if you want to be a jerk for no reason. I just bought your business domain. Here's all the links I plan on posting on it. I don't have to list your business name because all of your business listings across the internet have this URL pointing to it. Keep parking like a jerk. Yes, it's legal, but you are willfully doing this just to annoy me. I legally bought your domain and can legally link these articles. Park behind me again and I'll launch it. Within an hour, his truck was removed into his driveway. 
He asked me for the domain and I told him, when either you move or I move, I'll hand it over. Until then, it'll remain offline. Edit. Only thing fake was the time frame. This happened last week, not a few years ago. He was originally charged with capital murder, but his lawyer convicted him of a plea deal for manslaughter because they have way more than enough to convict you of capital murder. 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 <laughs> Edit 2. For those saying this is fake, I'm putting my house on the market in two to three months. When it sells, I'll come back and post all the news articles as I won't be anywhere near here, so doxing will be much more difficult. Yo, that would be cool. I don't know if this is like, I don't know if it's a good thing though. I'm interested. I want to find out who killed a kid, but I don't know. Is it like, is that, is it mean? Like, what if this guy moved on from that? And like, you know, he's grown as a person. I just feel like it's unnecessary to kick this up again. What if he's just an annoying douchebag? I don't know. Conflict, man. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.